Welcome back to Air Gun Academy. Today, I'm going to show you how to determine the cocking effort of spring piston air guns. This technique has several uses, which I'll talk about as we go. To do this, you're going to need a bathroom scale that operates by compressing a spring. A modern digital scale won't work as well for this procedure. If you don't have one of these older scales in your garage or basement, then it's time to scour the thrift shops. You should be able to find one of these scales for less than $5, and it's a helpful tool for those of you who shoot spring-powered air guns. So far, you've learned about three spring piston cocking systems. Brake barrel, side lever, and under lever. Each of these require a slightly different technique for measuring cocking force. Let's start with the easiest, which is the brake barrel. For this demonstration, I'm using the Air Venturi Bronco, but this technique works for any brake barrel rifle or pistol. Make sure the scale is on a hard, level surface. Place the muzzle as close to the center of the scale as possible. Now, press down on the stock and watch the dial on the scale as the barrel breaks open. Be careful not to break the front sights when you do this. The trick is to not cock the rifle, but to get as close as possible several times so you can see the peak force needed. To get a clear picture of the true effort needed, do this several times without cocking the gun and keep watching the scale. Sometimes the effort will decrease slightly as the barrel is repeatedly broken open. That decrease reflects the true effort required, as though you were shooting the gun repeatedly. Why does it matter how much effort it takes to cock a brake barrel? Well, actually, there are several reasons. First, it enables you to diagnose the relative condition of your power plant. For example, say you have a brake barrel that has been cocking with 33 pounds of effort. Then, suddenly, it only needs 26 pounds. If that happens, your air gun probably has a broken mainspring. On the other hand, if the cocking effort increases, the spring guide may be broken or is bent. Any sudden, large change in the cocking effort is a signal that something needs to be checked out. A second reason to measure the cocking effort is when you're considering who to buy the gun for. Younger shooters and some women shooters may not have the muscle mass required to cock the powerful mainspring. Generally, you'll want cocking efforts of less than 20 pounds for youth guns, but the lower the better. Some air guns require as little as 12 pounds of cocking effort. For smaller men and women, you don't want a cocking effort more than 28 pounds, and for younger shooters, less is always better. The average adult male can operate with a cocking effort up to about 35 pounds, but when the effort is beyond that, cocking a spring gun becomes harder. Some Magnum air guns that shoot in excess of 1300 feet per second have cocking efforts up to 50 to 60 pounds, which requires most shooters to use two arms. Now, let's learn a special technique for when measuring the cocking effort of a side lever gun. Put the scale on a strong table that you can stand beside and swing the side lever out and away from the gun. Rest the end of the lever near the center of the scale. This is like measuring the brake barrel, but we're doing it at waist level. Most side levers have an anti-bear trap device that catches the sliding compression chamber so it won't be as easy to measure the effort repeatedly. But it can be done by holding down the anti-bear trap button as you flex the side lever. If you do it this way, be careful that the lever does not whip off the scale and wrap your hand. Now let's apply the same technique when measuring the cocking effort of a side lever gun to an under lever like this TX200. Put the scale on a strong table that you can stand beside and swing the under lever out and away from the gun. Again. Rest the end of the lever near the center of the scale. This is like measuring the side lever, except the gun is turned 90 degrees. Like side levers, most under levers have anti-bear trap devices to catch the sliding compression chamber. 
It's generally best to completely cock under levers once because they're not as easily handled as side levers. You can measure the cocking effort multiple times if you remember where the anti-bear trap mechanism kicks in and avoid cocking the lever that far. You can also measure the effort of spring guns that have gas springs in them. But the maximum effort begins almost immediately and never changes through the cocking stroke. That's why gas spring guns always feel harder to cock. On some under lever and side lever guns, the lever linkage can add to the cocking effort. You can feel this happening and may be able to fix it with proper lubrication of the lever linkage. Here are some helpful hints about measuring cocking effort. On many guns, the maximum cocking effort does not happen at the end of the cocking stroke as you might have thought. Rather, it happens at about the two-thirds point. Once you get past that point, the mechanical advantage of the cocking stroke causes the effort to diminish. Therefore, that point is as far as you have to go. This procedure is an excellent way to measure the effort required to cock a gun before and after a tune-up. Besides diagnosing your gun's health, this is also a great way to rate the success of any work that's done on the gun. Besides spring guns, pneumatics can also be measured this way. Just put the pump handle on the scale and press down on the gun to measure the effort. In this episode, we've shown you an advanced air gun maintenance procedure by simply using an air gun and a scale. In future episodes, we may refer to this procedure and ask that you measure the cocking effort of your gun. Thanks for watching Air Gun Academy. Stay tuned for another great lesson from Pyramid Air.